me begin today's reflection by asking you, how well do you know your Bible? For example, where do the following three quotations appear? First of all, cleanliness is next to godliness. And then, money is the root of all evil. And thirdly, the sun shines on the righteous. Actually, the answer is that not a single one of them appears in the Bible. And yet, we hear them quoted, or more accurately misquoted, on a regular basis in daily conversation. Now, don't get me wrong, cleanliness is crucial, especially in these days of COVID-19. But this saying, cleanliness is next to godliness, appears nowhere in our scriptures. It's thought perhaps first to have come up in one of the early Jewish writings and then in an 18th century sermon by John Wesley. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 actually reads, The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Sounds similar, doesn't it? But one word changes the meaning. Because to be wealthy isn't a sin, it's how we use those riches that's important. And the third phrase I quoted lacks proper context. It should read, he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. That's Matthew chapter 5. The original version that I quoted might suit our own way of thinking where folk get what they deserve. It's a bit like karma. But actually, the truth is about receiving God's grace and his mercy irrespective of our own actions. Now, am I just being pedantic? Is this a matter of mere semantics? And why is it important to be accurate when we're quoting the Bible? Well, the short answer is simply that Jesus was, and he used it to great effect as a weapon against the devil. More of that in a moment. In recent times, we've been reflecting on the experience of God's people whilst in social isolation. David and Elijah, Noah and Moses have each been the subject of our thinking for the past three weeks. And now we turn our attention to Christ himself. On more than one occasion, Jesus chose to go off by himself for a time. And like the other biblical characters we've been studying, Christ used the solitary nature of those times to pray and to be prepared by his Father in heaven. He was going to powerfully fulfil the ministry to which God had called him and he needed to be made ready. Now, probably the most famous of those times was when Jesus spent 40 days, yes, almost six weeks, without food in the wilderness. We read about it in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 to 12. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to Jesus, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. 
If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Notice how Christ combats Satan's attacks. It is written. He accurately quotes the word of God again and again, and he sends the devil away with the tail between his legs. Like most Hebrew boys of his generation, Jesus would have learned the scriptures from an early age. I find it quite remarkable to think that the book of Psalms, for example, we have in our hands today would have been precisely the same words Jesus read and sang as a boy and as a man. How wonderful. Though a great deal in our world has changed, the promises of God have not. During lockdown, we have the ideal opportunity to read and to study and to learn, as well as to deepen our faith and to trust that what God has said and what God has promised his people is true. These days there are loads of Bible apps for your phone or your tablet or your computer. You version, Our Daily Bread, Bible Gateway. These will lead you through a portion of the Bible each day and they're free to use. There's also quite a few helpful devotional apps, things like Lectio 365, Sanctuary First, Pray As You Go, UCB Word for Today. For those who'd like to find out a bit more about these, I'll put links in the comments section below. If you stick at it, and why wouldn't you stick at it, before long you'll have read the whole Bible. I'm reminded of a limerick which goes like this. A keen Bible student named Wheatsley underlined each important verse neatly and the scriptures he found are so great and profound that he'd soon read the whole thing completely. So what are your favourite bits of the Bible? And which parts has God been speaking to you through in this period of lockdown? Here's a couple of verses I have pinned on my study wall. Do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. That's what God's been saying to me. What's he saying to you? Why don't you take some time to write out a verse or two of encouragement from the Bible and then take a photo and upload it to the comments section below. Now, let's wait upon God in prayer. Lord God, You sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to be the Word made flesh. He taught and exemplified your ways. And he called us to follow in that way. But how can we do so properly unless we know your way? And so we pray that in these trying times of lockdown, we will learn to value your scriptures more and more. Give us understanding, as well as the will to put into practice what we glean from our daily devotions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.